I want to talk about something that some people say should stop you from buying an Apple computer. And that's the fact that the internal storage drive, the SSD, is soldered on to the motherboard. Now there are lots of arguments against this approach, and they are valid, but most are based on knowledge of PC components. And in this video I want to explain how Apple's flash storage is different, and why you may not need to be concerned. But true, soldering an SSD to the logic board of a computer is by all conventional wisdom a silly and frustrating design choice. It's silly because solid state storage wears as you write data to it, and that means that your storage drive has a finite lifespan. And it's frustrating because it means you have to choose the right amount of storage at the time you buy your new Mac. And this is a computer you might be planning to use for many years, and it can be difficult to know what your needs will be in three or five years time, unless your name is Marty McFly. Apple has led this revolution in crippling consumer choice, and whilst it's true that PC manufacturers have embraced soldering components like CPUs and RAM to the motherboard, they've mostly resisted the temptation to solder SSDs, which is nice. I recently upgraded the SSD on my Surface Pro, which is great if you're happy to use Windows, but what if you want to use Mac OS and you need a Mac? With the exception of the Intel Mac Pro, Apple doesn't offer any computers with upgradable internal storage. So what do you do? Boycott Apple? Switch platforms? And here's the real point of this video. How much of a problem is it to have your storage soldered to the logic board of your new Mac? Is it going to fail? Let's discuss. Now we need to be very clear here, I am not defending Apple's design choices, but I do think that this issue is perhaps not as big as some anti-Apple commentators might have you believe. The frustration of not being able to change your storage drive is a real thing. But I don't think Apple's soldered SSDs are as likely to fail as some folks believe. Firstly, consider Apple's main goal as a company, and that is making money. They are a publicly traded company and the shareholders expect dividends and a rising share price, and that can only happen if there's profit. So whilst I'm sure Apple has many employees who genuinely want to make a difference in the world of tech, and the company itself wants to make great computing experiences, but at the end of the day, they answer to the shareholders, and the shareholders want profit. So ask yourself, will Apple make a profit if they have to spend vast sums of money replacing broken SSDs that require removal of the entire logic board? Well, that doesn't make good business sense. And for that reason alone, we can probably safely conclude that Apple's engineers don't believe that the SSD will fail for the vast majority of users and machine lifespans. Back in 2011, Apple bought an Israeli company called Anobit for something like $500 million. Apple was already using Anobit's flash storage technology in the iPhones and the MacBook Air. So buying the company meant that Apple could develop the technology and not have to rely on third parties. Let's talk about what made Anobit unique, and we're going to use some technical terminology here. Don't worry if you don't understand it, because we'll explain a bit more as we go through the video. Anobit had developed a controller technology using something called MSP, or Memory Signal Processing. And at the time, back in 2011, this meant that Anobit could take consumer-grade NAND storage with multi-level cells and extend the lifespan of each cell from something like 3,000 write cycles to 50,000 write cycles. And that's big news, because it meant that consumer-grade NAND flash could actually be used in mission-critical enterprise environments, uh, helping to lower costs. But that was more than 11 years ago, and flash storage has really moved on at a pace since then. It's gotten faster. So fast, in fact, that it's revolutionized things like swap memory usage. When your computer needs more RAM or system memory than you have available, it will start to move sections of memory to the internal storage of your computer. All operating systems do this, and they've done it for decades, but back in the days of traditional spinning disks, the storage was so slow in comparison to system RAM that if your computer started swapping memory, you could expect to be looking at a lot of hourglasses or spinning beach balls. But when Apple introduced its own silicon with the first M1 machines, we noticed that they made heavy use of swapping, especially on the models with 8 gigabytes of RAM. But the drive was so quick, you barely notice it happening if at all. Now, it's true that there were some software glitches at the time of launch, and that meant that some machines were writing huge quantities of data to the SSD, and we were all quite worried about that. Now, since that time, in the last couple of years, have you seen loads of news stories about all those overworked drives failing? I haven't seen any, and I've been looking for them. But why aren't they failing? 
After all, the Apple detractors would immediately point to the soldered-on SSD as being a huge risk of failure. But the truth is that the SSD is one of the most reliable components in a computer. Spinning disks had, and still have, a higher failure rate in comparison to SSDs. Aside from this YouTube channel, we run a large web development and marketing company, and we buy a lot of computers and a lot of servers, and I've had plenty of spinning disk failures over the years, but so far, not even one SSD failure. Now, maybe we just got lucky, but I am talking in terms of hundreds of drives over the past two decades. Now, that's not to say that SSDs don't fail. They absolutely do, because the individual flash cells wear every time data is written to them. The most durable NAND flash uses something called single level cells, or SLC, and these can tolerate 50,000 to 100,000 write cycles, or even more. But this is the most expensive type of NAND flash, typically used in mission critical enterprise environments. Next, we have dual layer cells, known as MLC, which is short for multi level cells. And here you're looking at maybe 3,000 to 10,000 write cycles, depending on the grade of the drive. And remember that this is the type of storage that Anobits controller managed to dramatically improve lifespans on back in 2011. More commonly now, though, we see 3D NAND flash, and this is where the cells are stacked in layers. This means that manufacturers can increase storage capacities without increasing the physical size of the drive. And the first type of this flash is the triple layer cell, or TLC. And this has become the most common type of consumer flash storage. You can expect around 3000 write cycles per cell. But we also commonly see QLC or quad layer cells in the cheapest SSDs. These are generally recommended for long-term storage use, where you're more likely to be reading data rather than writing it. And that's because the lifespan of a QLC cell is around 1000 write cycles. So we can see that the lifespan of SSDs will depend on the type of NAND flash being used, and it will depend on how the storage is being utilized by the user. If you go out and buy a QLC drive and you spend all day writing huge volumes of data to it, it will fail sooner than a TLC drive that's being used in a more general way. And we've also seen that a controller can make a big difference to how those cells wear. Cells don't immediately fail the moment they reach their write cycle design limits, but they will eventually become unreliable. The controller manages that by distributing the load across the cells more evenly. Drive manufacturers will also include additional cells beyond the stated capacity of the drive, and this is known as over-provisioning, and it can be used to reduce the overall drive wear. And additionally, those spare cells can also be used to replace any failed cells, which further increases the reliability of the drive. Now, these techniques are fairly well known to tech enthusiasts and geeks like myself, but what is perhaps less well known is the fact that it's possible to combine cells and emulate a different type of cell. For example, TLC can emulate SLC if it's used in something called PSLC mode which may sound confusing, but the net result is that this increases endurance from those 3000 write cycles typical for TLC up to 20,000 cycles, at the cost of losing 67% of the capacity of the cells. The thing is, you as the consumer won't know how much over-provisioning exists in the drive or whether some of those cells are being used in PSLC mode, because you only see the published and formatted capacity of your storage and Apple specifically doesn't provide any technical data on its drives. And something else that folks don't always realize is that in an Apple Silicon Mac, the SSD controller is part of the M1 or M2 system on chip. When you look at the logic board, you can see the NAND flash chips, but this is a different approach to using a conventional M.2 SSD. And it's another reason why the drives are not replaceable with standard PC components. Apple has tightly integrated the controller with the software. Now, why would Apple go to the trouble and expense of approaching the flash storage in a completely different way to PC manufacturers? They could have just used off-the-shelf SSDs. That would be cheap and easy and good for consumers. But it's another clue that more might be going on behind the scenes. Now, let's just go back to the memory swapping activity that we spoke about earlier, because this is clearly a design choice. Just ignore the software gremlins that happened at launch. Despite that, the Apple Silicon Macs definitely use memory swapping much more than the Intel Macs ever did. So if it's part of the design, is it possible that the SSD controller is supporting that by provisioning the swap area of the SSD using that PSLC emulation we spoke about? 
And how far has Apple developed Anabit's memory signal processing technology since 2011? And what effect does that have on the lifespan of your SSD? Remember, Apple didn't just buy Anabit's technology. They bought the company and they employed all of its engineers. So all of these factors, along with the absence of any widespread reports of SSD failures, leads me to the conclusion that soldered SSDs are not the big issue that some people think they are. And that you can't compare the flash storage in your Mac to a standard M.2 SSD in a PC, because the controller approach and the integration with the operating system is different. So true, the SSD in your Mac may well be soldered to the logic board, and that does mean that you need to choose your configuration carefully. And it might also mean that you need to be more diligent with backups, because no matter how good the storage components may be, all components can suffer from defects and fail as a result. The fact that it's such a tiny proportion of components which fail won't be much comfort if it happens to you. Now, you may need to think carefully about the warranty of the machine, and you might want to consider taking out Apple Care insurance, because it is true that if your storage fails, this whole machine will need to go back to Apple. And nobody can argue that that's good for the consumer, because it just isn't. It would be a massive frustration. And I expect that many people facing that situation would probably buy a new computer. And Apple is completely fine with that because they're in the business to make money. It is possible though to hate the corporate greed, but still love the products that the company makes. And there's no doubt that these Apple Silicon Macs are fantastic computers that have been truly game changing. Now I mentioned the web business that I own with my pal Pete, and we've got almost 40 staff and pretty much all of them have been transitioned to Apple Silicon Macs over the past two and a half years. And so far we've had no hardware issues. And that is a pretty unique experience. And I have to say it's very refreshing because some of the Intel MacBooks have been problematic to say the least. So for the vast majority of users, the flash storage in your Mac is very unlikely to fail during the useful life of the machine. And in fact, it's much more likely that other components will fail before the SSD ever does. We accept soldered components in our phones and tablets, so I guess it's probably inevitable that we'd have to do the same with our computers at some point. Uh, I hope this video was of help to you, and I'm sure it won't stop the strongly voiced opinions on component soldering. And yes, guys, I get it. But uh, bear in mind, PC manufacturers will probably follow suit. So maybe it's up to us as consumers to demand that manufacturers like Apple are more open about the specifications of the storage. What are we buying? How is it actually working? What is the projected lifespan? With that information, we as consumers can make a more informed choice. As always, I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell. That really helps me to continue making content. On which note, I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.